Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're a married couple in love that loves superhero movies. And right now we're rewatching all of the DC Extended Universe. Uh, or the DCEU, as it's also called by nerds like us. And uh, so we're rewatching these movies and we're going ahead and we're using a score sheet to properly rank them. And this score sheet uses different categories and then give them points on that. And then based on the points they get, that's where we rank them. And the biggest thing is that we have uh, basically a breakdown of different categories for each of these uh, rankings that we give it. And we determine whether or not it's something that we would love it or leave it. So we just rewatched Justice League and this is our review for that. Justice League gets a lot of crap, all right? A lot. Yes, for sure. Um, so we did not have big expectations going into this. Actually, we had very low. Yes. Uh, so was Justice League really that bad? Let's dive into it. So our first category are our lead characters. In Justice League, the lead characters are Batman or Bruce Wayne mm. and Wonder Woman or Diana Prince. So how'd you feel? For me, this is a love it. And um, it's a big reason because of this is Diana Prince, Wonder Woman. That's the reason that I love it. Batman is a leave it for me. I don't, I'm not a big, big fan of Batfleck. Uh, I think is what he's called. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to Battinson, Robert Battinson. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Ben Affleck's character, you know, he seems like a, he's a person who actually has kind of like, uh, has some darkness in him, I think. But when he plays Bruce, Bruce Wayne, it's almost like he's trying to, to portray like he's this mysterious and, and dark person. And like, I don't believe any of it. Like, I don't believe that, you know, that's coming from any truth. And I know Ben Affleck's a good enough actor to, to, to do this. So I'm not sure what actually happened in this role. Um, Maybe it hits too close to home. They were a love it for me, but I actually thought it was a love it for both. Oh, and, okay. Um, in our rankings, we actually break it down even further as to how much do you love these characters. And I would actually put both Wonder Woman and Batman in my inner circle of friends. Um, well, yeah, he's rich. Of course you want to put Batman into your inner circle of friends. I like to point out that he's always been the one concerned with the benefits, and that's never been my agenda. I'm just going to put that out there. Because uh, I ain't rich, baby. <laughs> <laughs> What I liked about this is that in Batman's story, they finally stopped focusing on like gratuitous workout scenes and shirtless shots. And they actually gave us a little bit more taste of who Batman was as a person. I also really liked the respect that he had for Wonder Woman, uh, yeah, how true. he was trying to kind of groom her to be the new leader in the group. Um, and I think the fact that he saw her for all the potential and the wonderful things that she is speaks very highly of him. And then of course, I mean, Wonder Woman is just freaking awesome. Like there's, yeah. Like we don't even need to talk about this because it's just so blatantly obvious in there. Wonder Woman. Yes. We love, we hence, love Wonder hence Woman. Hence we have Wonder Woman <laughs> as our backdrop. Moving on to the villain. Now the villain in this one was Steppenwolf, and his end goal was basically to turn Earth into his own little personal hell. Aided uh, by an army of demons who feed off of fear. For me, this was a leave it. It was it was too archetypal and like symbolic right. and and like caricature without Big being... bad monster. That's what this was. Another yeah. just big bad monster and uh, there wasn't enough depth to this uh, to this villain. I mean, obviously we want our heroes to win, but we don't have any other investment in this. I didn't know enough about Steppenwolf from the comics, so I don't know how uh, much they nailed the, the portrayal of Steppenwolf. And if you know, then just let us, you know, drop us down in the comments what you thought about Steppenwolf's portrayal. If you were a big fan of the comic books, what you thought about him. The one thing that the big bad monsters do have going for them, which Steppenwolf did, Powerful. is that he is significantly more powerful than our heroes. So the head-to-head -head battles are interesting to see. It's interesting yeah. to think about how our heroes are going to defeat a monster who is so formidable. I mean, he's just, you know, uh, an old This is world... formidable. Yeah. This is formidable. <laughs> it's also large breasts. No, it's... no, that would be this. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, if the right. boobs out to here, I'd be a little concerned. <laughs> Moving on from breasts. Um... We will never, ever move on. Side characters! <laughs> So this is Justice League, so we had a lot of interesting side characters in this one. Um, was this a love it or leave it for you? So for me, this was a love it, and it's pretty much almost entirely due to one character. The Flash steals this category. Yes, he does. Hands down, I want The Flash to have his own movie. I thought the actor that they picked for this part played it Knocked out perfectly. Of and that being said, I don't know Flash from the comics, so if you agree with this portrayal, let us know. If you think it's off the mark, tell us that as well. It's interesting to hear the people who are very fluent in the comics and, and know these characters from that universe. He was my most central side character in this one. I thought that he really kind of saved this film. The one knock I will say is they pushed, like, he was just all humor. 
I mean, so like everything, see, not every single word he says needs to be a joke. That's the only, that's my only criticism. Like as the movie went on, it started to be like, okay, like you don't need to make a joke about everything. You know, like he, this guy can be just more than just one note. And I think the actor definitely could be, which is why I would love to see a standalone movie with the Flash and this uh, and this actor playing him. Okay, so next up is the script. So for me, the script, um, it's kind of a leave it. I didn't hate it, um, but it just didn't. Again, I think DCEU, there was more potential here than they achieved with uh, the characters and the storyline that they could have created. It just um, didn't, didn't really do it for me. Yeah, for me, this was a leave it as well. Uh, the dialogue was okay. I mean, again, The Flash saved the dialogue for me in this one, and Wonder Woman uh, was great as well. And the, the plot was just kind of, you know... Super team is trying to kill a big bad monster and save the world. The Lois Lane and Superman love story is a love story. We've seen it. We are invested in it as a DCEU mm. audience member. But it was it was almost like the footnote of this story. Yeah. Uh, a more interesting love story, and one that I think they could have expounded on a bit more, is the Batman and Wonder Woman love story. There is... They're like, friend, they're like friendship, basically. Friendship. Yeah. There is hints of, ooh, could there be a romantic something there? but it's not really built up and for whatever reason that's fine we don't need it to be there but the respect that they have the team partnership that they have the friendship that they have and then any potential romance would be something worth exploring mm -hmm. moving on to our final category which is film impact what kind of impact did this film leave with you uh how did you feel while you're watching it did you laugh did you cry did you get bored uh for me this is a this is a love it and uh, the humor was great. You know, we've talked about the Flash over and over again, and once again. But even, you know, there are some other characters. Uh, the whole Batman talking to Aquaman about whether or not he can talk to fish. I thought uh, Ben Affleck's delivery on that one was, was spot on. So you, you can talk to fish, right? You, you can. That was great. The action scenes were actually pretty cool in this one. Uh, one of my favorite action scenes was when Superman comes back to life and he's fighting the Justice League. You always kind of want to see your, like, when you can get those moments where the heroes are fighting each other, it's believable and, like, you know, but you get to see, could Superman kick crap out of the entire Justice League? And you kind of get the answer is, yeah, he could. <laughs> uh, it's one of those experiences that as an audience member, like, it, it's so wonderfully uncomfortable and grating because you hate to see what you're seeing. And yet also there's that part of you that, like, loves to see how this happens and how they go head to head. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though you really don't want them to hurt each other or fight, at the same time, you're like, oh, I can't believe what I'm seeing. <laughs> For me, it was a love it. One thing that I think they could have done a little bit more on is the heart. Um, I yeah. think... Part of that could have been built up a little bit more. We mentioned with the relationship between Batman and Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Whether romantic or not, I think those two are in in a huge way the heart and soul of this team. Let's move on to our final scores. Uh, <laughs> so for me, Justice League actually scored pretty high. This movie wasn't as bad as I as I thought it was or as I remembered it being. I gave it, I gave it a 72 and I gave it two fist bumps. One for the Superman uh, coming back to life and one for Wonder Woman's entrance. So I gave my total score at 74. So my score was a 77 with one fist bump, which makes my final score a 78. And I agree with you. I think this this film scored higher than we expected. Um, I do think it was due to the action and the humor because let's face it, at the end of the day, this was your summer blockbuster, your summer yeah. popcorn movie. Uh, it's not a movie that's probably going to change the world, but mm. it's going to entertain you for a couple of hours. And, you know, that's all we need with superhero films. So Justice League got a score of 76 from us. But that is definitely not definitive.